Hello trumpet players and musicians in general because this does apply to everybody that plays an instrument. In this video we're going to talk about the number one worst way to practice your music. This is a subject that I've found interesting for decades now, and because I'm so interested in this, I've been conducting an informal survey since the mid-80s. I like to ask people, how do you practice? And so most of the people I've asked have been students. So let's say I'm teaching at a school, um, I hear some of the kids, I overhear them talking about how they're practicing this, they're practicing that, and I'll say, that's very interesting. How do you practice? But aside from just students, I do ask pros every once in a while. It's just, you know, if you're on the gig, a lot of pros don't like to talk about practicing. So it's not always appropriate to do that. Well, after decades of asking this question, how do you practice? I've discovered that somewhere around the area of 90% of people who play an instrument practice the number one worst way to practice. And what is that way? Uh, let's come out right out and say it. The worst way to practice is to sit there Put the music on the stand. And by the way, we're talking about practicing your music. We're being very specific. We're not talking about your overall regime or whatever, uh, or your overall philosophy. We're talking about you've got a piece of music you have to learn. How are you going to practice it? By far, the worst way to practice it is to put the music down and just try to get it right. That's the worst way to practice. And when we look at why it's such a bad way to practice, it comes down to this idea that to play better, you have to try harder. Well, news flash for you here. There is no such thing as trying harder. That's not a thing on the trumpet. Or if you're another kind of instrument, that's not a thing. When we think of trying harder, it's like, you know, you can't lift the 50 pounds, try harder, put more oomph into it. Doing a better job at music is not like that. The mental effort that it takes, if you're in the performance or even in the practice session and you feel like you need to try harder, you're just doing it wrong. Because there's no such thing as try harder. Maybe you mean concentrate better? That's not the same thing as trying harder. Trying harder means you're putting more effort. And what I'm here to tell you is that typically the best players don't have to try hard. They just follow certain procedures and the results they get come from the fact that they did those things. That those tasks, those tasks lead to those results. Okay? And here's the problem with trying harder. Trying harder only leads, in your performance, trying harder only leads to frustration. Trying harder in your performance is an emotional thing. And yes, we want to be emotional when we perform, right? But we want that emotion to be channeled through the horn, not just something that we're experiencing on stage and that everybody else has to, the people in the audience have to now endure on our behalf. 
that's not the kind of emotion that we're talking about when we say we want to be expressive. The expression should be channeled through the music. And yes, I, I will admit, sometimes when people are emotional on stage, that does, in, to a small degree, spill over into their performance. But that's, when we really, really know what we're talking about, that's not great performance. So that frustration that kicks in because you tried harder is really a dead-end street. It's, it's a doom and gloom scenario. Now, the reason you have to try harder is because you don't have skills. You don't have practice skills. If you had, it's sort of like someone that's got a toolbox trying to build a house and the other dude doesn't have any tools. You know, you can try harder to build a house. Maybe hammer the, the, <laughs> hammer the nails in with a rock or something. I don't know. You're not going to build a very nice house without the right tools. And it's the same thing with practicing a piece of music. you got to have the right tools to... So anyway, let's take this step by step to the best way to practice. So I've already established that the worst way to practice is just to try harder. Just trying to get it right. The second worst way to practice is to slow the music down. And... The margin in results, in benefit, between just trying harder and slowing everything down, it's a huge margin. Just by slowing stuff down, you are now a whole bunch better than you were than the, than the guy who was just trying to get it right. Slowing down gives your mind time to process the material. It gives you time to play more accurately, and the accuracy that you have when you play slower, practice slower, carries over into your performance. People who practice fast end up playing sloppy in their performance. People who practice slow, not so much. So that's the second worst way. The third worst way is to combine practicing slower with isolating trouble spots. So you figure out from the piece which part of it's giving you the most trouble. You isolate that part and spend all of your time playing that slower so that you do a better job in the performance. You don't waste as much time practicing stuff that you can already play. Now, I'm sure that a bunch of you have already heard all of that. Because this is the kind of stuff that's taught, right? So, uh, you know, even though that much is taught, why is it that people always answer, oh, I just try to get it right? That part I don't understand. It's like they're not paying attention. But even that's the third worst way. Before we go into the first best way, let's talk about Give a recap of what we've said already. Worst way is just try to get it right. Second worst way is to slow everything down. Third worst way is to slow the sections down that you're having trouble with. Let's talk about now the best way to practice. The best way to practice is to use a proven practice technique to learn your music. Let me say that again. The best way to practice is to use a proven practice technique. So for example, instead of trying to just get it right, instead of just slowing it down, instead of 
using the isolated sections and slowing them down. You can use the first practice technique I ever learned. It's called the metronome method. And this is better than just slowing something down. The metronome method, you slow it down to precisely half of the tempo that you're supposed to be playing it at. You play it 10 times correctly, and you move that metronome up one notch. And you play it 10 times correctly again. Now, if you start off at 50% tempo, and you can't play it at that tempo, then you have to slow it down one quarter tempo. And the way you do that is change the value that gets the beat. So if quarter notes were originally getting the beat, instead of slowing the metronome down more, you now give eight notes the beat. And that way you're going to be one fourth of the tempo and for sure, unless there's some other problems, for sure you should be able to play that at that tempo. Now sometimes tempo is not the problem. But I'm only giving you one example here. This is the metronome method. And the metronome method works. It got me into high school, uh, into high school Allstate twice. So the metronome method is a wonderful method. I don't use it much anymore because I have better methods, better techniques, practice techniques from, the, from that method. I still use the metronome method if there are shortcomings in some of the other techniques. For example, let's say um, one of my techniques that I use says do this, do A, do B, do C. Let's say I get to B and B is too fast for my fingerings or whatever. I will now stop that process, take a little detour, and use the metronome method to speed B up so that I can get this other technique going. And yeah, it is a little bit complicated like that sometimes. Now, where are you going to get these techniques? Unfortunately, I've done searches on Google, best, uh, best music practice techniques, that kind of search. Most of the results that come up don't teach not as they don't even teach a single practice technique. What they what they teach are practice what I would call tactics or practice uh, strategies. They don't talk about any practice techniques about what should what should you actually do right now to make the music better. They don't give you that, which I find astounding. Really, I find it astounding. Uh, these techniques that I use, that I teach, are hundreds of years old. Why is it that they don't get taught more than they do? Uh, really, it's remarkable. And for now, you know, I, I, I do think I will eventually do videos and blog posts. And there's a book coming out uh, that talks about these techniques but for now <laughs> you just have to find a teacher that does this and i know that makes it sound like i'm doing an ad for my own lessons maybe kind of sort of i am but no i don't have enough <laughs> lesson time slots open to teach all of you i think more than anything else the purpose of this video is to open your eyes. If you're one of the people who are practicing this way, just trying to get it right, or just slowing it down, I want you to open your eyes and see that there's more to it than that. Great musicianship is not just trying harder. It's not just slowing things down. That's like kindergarten practice stuff. So I already shared with you the metronome method, right? The metronome method, you take it, 
you slow it down 50% and you increase in increments. You know, I've heard people with different variations of these, of, of this technique, that if they screw it up once, they go back to the beginning, to back to half tempo. And, you know, that's awesome. The, to hold yourself to that kind of quality, you know, standard. But all of the techniques that I know, and, and you know, there's not really that many of them. But, and I've, I've invented some myself. That's just how I am. Um, mostly modified versions of the pre-existing techniques. I think you need to be able to do that. Um, but yes, I think at this point, it's, it's mostly, this video is mostly about getting you to open your eyes. Start looking. I didn't make most of this stuff up. And if, if they're telling you about, like I read an article, I think, I'm just paraphrasing because I don't want to be putting people down. That's not what this is about. But I read an article talking about um, making your practice space more comfortable. And that's a practice technique. That's not a practice technique. Um, stuff that deals with posture and stuff like that, that's not a practice technique. Practice techniques are nuts and bolts instructions on how you take a piece of music that you can't play and turn it into something that you can play. And that stuff is out there. And if you're hungry for that, yes, you can take lessons with me. I will teach you these techniques. But more importantly, you should be out there looking for it. Get yourself on Gutenberg. Gutenberg is a uh, archive of public domain books. And some of the stuff that I've learned, I, I found on Gutenberg. Actually, I need to take that back. I, what I found on Gutenberg was when I was looking for references uh, for a book I'm writing. So I shouldn't make it sound like I learned it from that. But it's, let, let's put it this way. I think the reason I said that is I learned more about it from that. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. I've been learning these practice techniques since 1980. When I was in, uh, no, not 80. What am I saying? 84. Uh, getting old here. 1984 is the first time uh, someone told me. Now, okay, so the metronome method I knew in high school. So that would have been 1978. Um, 1984 is when I started learning other techniques. And they're wonderful techniques. They work. That's the best part of it, is these techniques work. And there's different variations of them. Now, I'll, take, I'll, I'll tell you one more thing before we sign off here. The reason you need more than one technique is because you need different tools for different parts of the job. Right? So if you have a, a long run, maybe, now run being like 16, no, right? If you have a long run and the, you're having trouble with the fingerings, there's three different techniques I can think, depending on what your problem is, what is the nature of your problem with the fingerings? Actually, now I'm thinking four. Four different techniques that I can teach, but it depends on why is that a problem. Now, if you have a rhythmic problem instead of a note problem, a fingering problem, that's going to be a different technique. I'm going to say it one more time, I'm astonished that more people aren't teaching this stuff because it's been around for hundreds of years. Really. 
I do have my little ways of, of like, so like I have a book and it's finished. I've been telling you guys this for, about this for a year now. The book is finished. I don't like the overall theme. So I have to go back and subtract the theme and re, I'll have to rewrite it, put it that way. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm sharing with you traditional techniques Hundreds of years old, but they are rearranged in a system of techniques that I think is unique to me. Might not be, you know, I don't know everybody who teaches in the world, right? So maybe other people have something similar. Um, but for me, this is something I've not heard of before. So yes, I do have my own personal way of doing some of this stuff. I think, of course, or else I wouldn't be teaching it. I think my way is better. <laughs> that sounds arrogant. But it's actually, if the person you're taking lessons with doesn't think their way is better, uh, maybe they shouldn't be teaching that way. Huh? So anyway. Yes. Summary, real quick. The worst way to practice. Number one worst way to practice is to just try to get it right. The best way to practice is to use proven, hundreds of years old practice techniques to learn the music and to perfect the music. All right? Just to open your ears and your eyes so that you, you are alert to this so that maybe you can go looking the way I did. I've been collecting these techniques for all this time. Because it interests me. I like practical stuff like this. I don't like the touchy-feely, wishy-washy stuff. I like the practical, do A, B, C, and the results are X, Y, Z. I like that. So, be on the lookout for that stuff. It works, okay? If you want lessons, yes, I'm available for lessons. Just we're kind of reaching our, our, our limit. I won't teach past a certain number, and we are close to that certain number. Um, so if you want to get in on a weekly basis. Now, that said, if you are only interest in, interested in what we call ad hoc lessons, one lesson at a time, and then you take the next one when you think you're ready, we're open to that most of the time. We're not doing any limit on that. It's just a first come, first serve basis, okay? All right. Well, very good. God bless you guys. If you have any questions about this stuff, please feel free to ask. We will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching this video. I wanted to spend just a minute to let you know that there's a better, more convenient, more organized way to access all of these videos. We have literally hundreds of videos here on YouTube and, and quite frankly, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So to make it a little bit more organized and easier for you to access what you want to access, I created a separate page, a separate area on my website, that's eddielewis.com. And if you go to eddielewis.com, click on the menu, click on videos. It will take you there. I have the videos categorized. And then within those categories, some of them, like the, the educational videos, you can click on it and go in there and look for the videos specifically that you're looking for. Okay? So go to eddielewis.com, E-D-D-I-E-L-E-W-I-S.com. Thank you very much.